The Legacy Voyager Tarn Mold was one of my favorite Transformers toys of 2023, which is funny because as of the filming of this video, I still haven't even filmed my top 10 Transformers of 2023. I don't know why I've been putting that off, but I just have. But whether this comes out before or after, this mold is definitely on the list. So when I saw that there was the subject of today's video, I was like, yeah, I think I need that. So I love this Voyager Tarn. I think it's really cool. It's by far one of my favorite Voyager classes Hasbro has ever made. It's super poseable, very nicely detailed. Some people think it doesn't have enough bulk and everything to it, but honestly, I feel like they're just not really used to a Transformer that actually has like a slender physique without a lot of extra kibble on it. Because I think this guy is very blocky and coherent and doesn't really have any hollowness and overall just does a great job at succeeding at what it was trying to do. And I personally think what it's trying to do works a little bit better when it's the size of a leader class. Say hello to the black mamba oversized bootleg of Legacy Voyager Tarn. Uh, so the cool thing is Legacy Voyager Tarn retailed for $35. And nowadays it's kind of hard to get. However, this KO upscale that is essentially old school leader class, not like Revenge of the Fallen, like Optimus Prime leader class size, but I would compare it to like an Age of Extinction leader class when it comes to like the size and everything, like an old generations one, but a lot more bulky and durable. This also is around $35, maybe $40, $45, depending on where you order it. I ordered it off of AliExpress where I only had to pay $35. And for $35, Whoa, <laughs> it's really cool seeing the difference between this original Voyager and this KO upscale. Now, Black Mamba is the manufacturer of this, and they've gone by several different names throughout the years. It's, it's a KO company. They're always on the run, right? So I knew when I saw that name attached to it, it would be a solid release because Black Mamba makes some incredible stuff. Absolutely fantastic KO upscale manufacturer. Because they don't just try to blow it up and, you know, kind of make it cheap, but kind of make it decent, kind of like that Nemesis Prime I did a YouTube short on and got last time on AliExpress. This is a genuine high-quality collector figure that is the price of a Voyager and the size of a leader. <laughs> With die-cast. <laughs> yes. His feet are die-cast, his chest piece is die-cast, and I don't think anything else is die cast but still especially the feet being die cast adds so much weight and heft to this guy and he also has lights and he's huge and he has extra accessories and he does one really cool little thing that i think is incredible and i just want to talk about that right now <laughs> so with a lot of ko upscales you know they upscaled weapons as well you know obviously you can see is double barreled you know fusion cannon is way bigger than the original. It's also a lot, you know, a lot more painted. And that just looks really cool. And some people may wonder, oh, hey, can you, you know, use it with the old one? And many times when a KO upscale is upscaled, they don't really think about the port size. Uh, and they just upscale the port size right along with it. But I'm very happy to report that Black Mamba, in their infinite wisdom, modified the mold so it retained the five millimeter ports and uh, pegs. So you can see the hole is smaller in proportion to like the surrounding area. So you can take the bootleg big old fusion cannon and attach it to the original one. Now granted, it's very big and heavy and the original one doesn't really want to hold it up too much, but still that is something you can do. And another accessory that this bootleg includes it actually includes an upscaled version of Bludgeon's Sword, which I think is super cool that they included this. They absolutely didn't have to. But again, because it still retains the 5mm ports, you can actually give it to a standard Transformers figure. You know, you can actually do that. I was scared for a second because I saw that seam and I thought it had cracked to the finger. And I'm like, I thought I already tested this before the video. It should fit. So I was so paranoid I'd broken it. But no, we're good. <laughs> so, yeah, you can actually give this to a standard figure. And that port as well is also compatible. And there's no, like, stress to it. There's no anything like that. And I really just want to point that out near the beginning because I did not know that about this guy at all. And I think that is super cool. So when it comes to the actual like engineering, 
there is almost no physical difference between them. Uh, the only physical difference that I have noticed engineering-wise between these guys, even like sculpt-wise and everything, almost everything looks exactly the same. One of the only differences is uh, with this guy, when you bend the knees, and especially when you get it transformed in the tank mode, these knee pads, they look fine in robot mode, but they kind of just jut out in the tank mode and look kind of ugly. And we will transform uh, both of these. But I do want to point out also, they did add a hinge on the knee pad. So for transformation, that looks a lot better. And some may say that this looks better as well, actually seeing that knee pad bent over the knee like that. Kind of makes a little bit more sense, covers up that hinge. But still, very nice. One thing you may notice is that this guy's joints are very robust. And they're kind of creaky as well. And that's great because he's a heavy die-cast boy and he's got to carry a lot. I always really enjoyed the original one for having very smooth, fluid motion. Because this thing just felt like such a fun figure to pose. Like, it takes me no effort at all to get him in one of the most dynamic poses I've ever seen a Transformers figure in. I love this mold to death. And if they decide to redo this into an oversized bludgeon... Might have to get that too. <laughs> but honestly, too, the character of Tarn, I love this Voyager one. I'm not going to get rid of it. But this might actually be my main shelf Tarn. Because I've always kind of seen Tarn as like a leader class worthy character. So I think this might be my main shelf Tarn. But with these joints, obviously, you can see, you know, they kind of have a creak to them. They're a lot more solid. Uh, I definitely enjoy the feel. They, like, every joint feels very nice and solid. But I would say, up at the arms, it starts getting a little creaky for my liking. I mean, it's still nice and solid, but the shoulders can creak. But worst of all, the elbows are creak city. They just creak. And that's good, especially considering this fusion cannon has a little trick up its sleeve. But I... Uh, it's a little... A little much... It's a little much. Thankfully, the head is not on a creek at all. It just is on a ball joint as as usual, even though it just creaked a little bit right there. Uh, so, yeah, it does creak a little bit, too. My bad. Never mind. <laughs> One thing I do love about this, too, is the metallic paint. I really do like the paint on this, but it wasn't very dynamic. It had a lot of paint, especially, like, on this torso. So much paint. But, like, just the flat purples and everything, not super dynamic. And seeing this metallic purple on this oversized bootleg, and I will get a, give you a closer look at this. It just looks so nice. It looks so nice in the metallics. And it has a lot more added paint as well. Like, look up at the shoulder. It's got, like, some pink in there and some silver. It's got way more paint on the fusion cannon. Some silver highlights on the feet. Um, around the back, that is also metallic. But it also does have some more black on the back, too, which I think looks nice. That is some extra purple to the arms. Some purple to the back of the legs, where it's just on the sides on the old one. Uh, what else? What else? Um, the arms look to have... Mostly about the same amount of paint, a little bit more black around the elbow. Uh, the head has a little bit more silver highlight on the bootleg. Uh, it doesn't have the Decepticon symbol, but obviously they can't do that. And overall, I just think the bootleg looks gorgeous. It really, really does. I did say it had a trick up its sleeve <clears throat> with the Fusion Cannon, and it definitely does. Uh, you might have seen it in the thumbnail if you're very, very eagle-eyed. But it's got little buttons that have been added. This one's on the side and this one's on the top. Hit the buttons... And it lights up. They are very, very bright lights. Like, if I would turn off all the lights in my room, it could actually serve as, like, a red flashlight. They are stupid bright. Now, one unfortunate thing when I saw this, I'm like, whoa, that's super awesome. I didn't know this guy did that. Obviously, you can remove them, attach them, just like the old one. But one thing I was kind of disappointed about, and this serves as a good opportunity to get up close on this guy, but when I saw that the cannons lit up, I'm like, oh, do the eyes light up too? Because if you remember, one of my complaints about the old Tarn was that the light piping was so, like, recessed that I didn't really... His eyes just looked dead. Now, granted, he does have light piping, but it's just that little block right there. And I was thinking, oh, maybe this guy's got a little, little light in his head. And I saw that little block again, and I'm like, oh, is that the button? And I hit it, and I'm like, oh, it's just the light piping again. And as you can see, it doesn't really shine through too well. So I personally would have liked it if they just for you know didn't even worry with the light piping and just painted the eyes. Or just made the light piping better, because it's... You know, just not very good light piping, in my opinion. It should... With all my studio lights, those eyes should be lit up. Other Transformers with good light piping, the eyes light up under, under my studio lights. So overall, this Tarn is gorgeous. I love the paint. I love the heft of it. I love the size. 
I adore this upscaled Tarn. And again, it's the same retail price as the original one. So let's go ahead and transform this and I can compare the tank modes real quick before we end the video. So obviously we wanna remove the weapons. Don't really need those. Uh, I'll transform the small one off screen because we don't need to go over that again. And then this, we just rotate this for tank mode. And one thing I did notice, uh, that port right there, I think that's painted gray. Some of the paint's wearing off on it, but I'm not worried about paint wearing off of a port. I would be very mindful of these, transforming these. As bending them from up here, you can see it's flexing. I would move them from down here so you don't accidentally, uh, as you can see, it's very, very tight, squeaky joint yet again. Last thing you'd want to do would be to uh, break your toy. Then the head flips back down again. And then the chest piece moves up. One thing I did notice on this bootleg, it is a little bit more difficult. Ow. <laughs> that creak. Ugh. It is a little bit more difficult to get the shoulders spread. Like, it doesn't want to just come out. You have to really, like, shimmy it and really work at it. Because typically on the original, it's just on sliders, and you just slide them out, no problem. Yeah, let me do that off camera. It wasn't too hard off camera. It was just where I needed my arms closer to my body to really get the strength in. Uh, so then we will lift that up as we rotate these downward. Did I not do it all the way? Oh, I was just missing it by one tiny little click. So then these will rotate down. Be mindful of this back plate as well. And then as those rotate down, it lifts that chest panel up, head goes in, and then the arms do the same thing the arms do. I'm trying to remember, do the, does the waist rotate? I don't think the waist rotates. No, it doesn't. So the arms, that panel is going to go like that. And then, does it, no, it doesn't rotate. I'm just losing my mind. It's, it's the usual, it's the usual J4 losing his mind. No big deal. So that hinges down like that. And then I always love these panels that like flip out. Oh, you're not even seeing it all the way, my bad. I love those panels that flip. Then it's, the transformation is pretty much identical. Like you already know the drill. The main difference is gonna come with the, the little knee pads, how those flip in. But I do, do still wanna show it off so you can kinda see the, the enhanced difficulty with the fact that it is a lot creakier and a lot sturdier. It does actually make the transformation a little bit more difficult to actually pull off. Here, let me zoom out a little bit because he's he's a big boy and zooming in for a transformation. Ooh, it's not broken. We're all good. That happened to me the first time I transformed it. It's just that hinge is so tight. This hinge is just on a clip. So as you're trying to rotate it, that hinge might actually come out before the other one moves. So that's perfectly normal. It's just where it's so tight. Uh, and then last but not least, we're gonna attach the legs, fold the knees down until the extra joint bends. And then we need to move this up and out of the way. Doesn't, doesn't that go all the way forward or I'm trying to remember? I think it goes like that, but we just have to make sure that the knees are like bent as far back as possible. Yeah, that's what it is. And then the feet plug in. Wow, that was actually very easy. First time I transformed this guy, the feet did not want to cooperate. And then those ports plug into the feet and the arms plug into the sides. I always rotate the hands just so it's not super in the way. I do wish they would have modified this where the hands could flip in somehow. But I really do enjoy this addition because I never liked how that looked in the back. But now that that folds down, it just makes the tank look so much more coherent. And last but not least, if you want to put this somewhere, you can... Like, I think it works best, like, on the side right here. It's kind of like a mild little slicey-dicey where it might stick out a little bit and, like, stab something. But then we'll tank th take this. I almost said tank this. <laughs> and plug it up the top. And there we go. Here's the bootleg Tarn in his tank mode. Now let me transform the other one, readjust the camera, and we'll compare them one last time. I know some people think this tank mode's kind of bogus and without really any real form, and I absolutely disagree. I think this tank mode looks super awesome, especially the KO version with that improvement of the knee pads flipping down. When I transformed to the original Voyager, which by the way is easier to transform because of how much looser it is, I did actually try to push those down and it didn't work. One annoying thing about this figure, you want to make sure the <clears throat> front of it is fully tipped up so the treads are even. Did I do that on the bootleg? 
Yeah, close enough. Close enough. One thing I really noticed, though, in the tank mode is how much more black the bootleg is. It is so much more black. The fusion cannons are more black. The feet are more black. That panel's more black. This is, like, it's so much more black in the tank mode. And I was very surprised to see that. But I honestly think the black and the metallic purple and the silver and the gold, it's its a, it's a color combination that has been tested and proven every single time. Name me a black and purple transformer that does not look cool. they it, It's an amazing color scheme. It's one of the best color schemes of all time. And I think the Black Mamba version pulls it off so beautifully. I really do enjoy the size difference. Like, you can see they are pretty, pretty differently sized. It's not, like, super drastic, honestly, especially seeing it in the tank mode. But I definitely feel the difference. I definitely do. Now, which one do I prefer over the other? Which one do I recommend over the other? I think it's probably no question. For the fact that the, both of these retail for the same price, and considering the fact that the retail on the old one now really is kind of null and void because it's not really in production anymore, and you have to spend aftermarket price to get Tarn. I personally, if you like KO upscale transformers, I personally recommend the Black Mamba upscale bootleg. That This is genuinely the one I recommend. They are both incredible, awesome toys. And we do have to acknowledge that this toy is only so fantastic because this one is so fantastic. I, you know, I'm not going to... I'm not going to sit here and act like this is not a bootleg because it is, but it took what this one did and improved it and made it bigger, which I think really benefits it. And I love it. I seriously love it. This is one of my favorite KO upscale transformers I've gotten in a long time. The added die cast adds a lot of quality. The paint quality is great. No, it's not lead, by the way. Black Mamba's been around for a while. I'm sure they don't use lead paint. I love the LED on the fusion cannon, even though I do wish that the eyes on the robot mode also had an LED added in. But I kind of understand why not, because it's still kind of a small head and the batteries would be kind of a pain. And I kind of get why they didn't, because this is big enough where it can house batteries. You know, I'm sure they're very odd batteries, but I don't even know how they're in there. They're just in there. I, I really do enjoy it. And honestly, the thing I pointed out at the beginning, the fact that they still retained the five millimeter pegs and ports is a triumph for bootleg oversized figures is very often do they not and you can't use the bootleg version on the official version but now i can now if i want to give bludgeon like a second very large black sword which i'm thinking i probably will uh because i don't really think tarn needs a sword uh i can and that's great i love that the fusion cannons are compatible i, I it's so it's just so cool it's so cool let me know what you think. What's your opinion on oversized bootlegs? Do you think that they're like morally corrupt and shouldn't exist and I shouldn't be buying and supporting them? Or do you think, hey, Hasbro's never going to make a leader class upscale of this Tarn figure with die cast and nice paint? Why can't China? <laughs> you know, it's this thing's sold out. Hasbro's made their money off of it. And I can, gar I can guarantee you if they reissue it, it will sell out again. So this is just an extra option that I think is really cool for collectors. There are some times where like a bootleg is kind of like filling a market void. Say uh, the Rise of the Beast Studio Series Voyager Optimus. There's like, I think a few different options to get like a bootleg of that. So it's kind of Hasbro's fault, really. They just didn't produce enough. I'm sure they'll release it in the main line, but it'll take way too long. But yeah, let me know what you think. I love both of these. I'm still very happy I have both of these in my collection. I recommend them both. But if you really like your Tarn to be big and bulky with lights and die cast and leader class size, I highly recommend you go on either AliExpress, TF Safari, other, you know, com other websites like, I'm trying to think, TF Direct, I think, is another one. There's so many other websites you can order like bootleg transformers off of uh i usually use either aliexpress or tf safari i love tf safari not sponsored but i love tf safari they're reliable they get you your products and they're great <laughs> Alrighty, thank you again so much for watching guys special shout out to channel members as always thank you all so much for the continued support have a great one and i'll see you in the next video bye